I'll tell you what, you know, going into this, I didn't expect it to do Wii U emulation so well, but I mean, this little thing is handling it like a champ. What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting together a surprisingly powerful, low-cost, small form factor emulation machine that really puts out some good performance. I was very surprised to see what this thing can actually do. And when using a PC like we have here, you can actually get out pretty cheap. Now obviously, we've got a small form factor unit and I wanted to keep it as small as possible, so I went with an HP Elite Desk 705G4. Now a lot of the time when you take a look at these smaller form factor PCs, they're going to be powered by older 4th gen up to the 7th gen Intel CPUs, but this one just happens to have an AMD Ryzen 2400GE. Now we don't have as much power as the regular old 2400, but like I mentioned, the emulation performance that this thing can put out using Linux is actually really surprising. So the price on these are around $150. Sometimes you can look out and find them for around $129 if somebody's got a big lot of them that they're trying to get rid of on eBay. And let's just say you didn't want to go with an HP variant. You can also opt to pick up one of the Lenovo variants with the same exact chip. You're going to get that same kind of performance. Now when it comes to RAM, all you're going to need is 8 gigs here because we're going to be using a Linux-based operating system known as Batocera. So it's basically just a standalone emulation operating system. It uses RetroArch cores for the lower-end systems and standalone emulators for the higher-end stuff like Wii U, PS2, GameCube, Wii, 3DS, and even PS3. Now, if you wanted to, you could go with Windows or a different version of Linux and install your own emulators, but this has everything we need already built in. You can actually boot this from a USB drive, a USB hard drive, an internal drive, or an M.2 drive. But with this setup here, I've actually got it installed on a 256 gigabyte M.2 SSD we've got right here in this Elite Desk 705. We've also got 8 gigabytes of RAM running in dual channel, and this is very important when it comes to these APUs. You definitely want two 4 gig sticks in here, but you know, if you wanted to go with more RAM, you could always go with two 8 gigs, making it a total of 16. But like I mentioned, for emulation, 8 is going to be plenty, and it's also going to keep the cost down. And finally here, we've got that Ryzen 2400GE. With this, we get 4 cores, 8 threads, and we've got a max clock up to 3.7 GHz. And of course, since this is an APU, we've got built-in graphics, and this just happens to have Radeon RX Vega 11 graphics up to 1250 MHz. And I'm going to tell you right now, with all of the latest updates to the Radeon drivers, we've seen a huge boost in OpenGL performance in Linux and Windows, which really does help out with emulation if you didn't want to swap over to something like Vulkan. And even then, there are some emulators like Citra for 3DS that only utilizes OpenGL. Alright, so here we are. I've got an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth to this mini PC, so I've got a wireless controller here. Now if your little PC didn't come with Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, you can always get an adapter. But overall, this operating system works great on this mini PC. I mean, it's very snappy. And with Batocera, we do have several different themes that we can download and install. So if you don't like the look of the stock theme, you can always go with something else. But as long as you have an internet connection, either Wi-Fi or Ethernet, you can go through and download new themes. The stock one looks something like this. Not bad at all, but there are several to choose from, and it's really easy to get them up and running in Batocera. Now just scrolling through here, as you can see, I've got a lot of stuff installed, but really I wanted to test out the higher end stuff like some GameCube, some Wii U, some PS2, and even PS3 on this little system. But real quick, I wanted to show you here system settings. We'll go to information. We've got that AMD Ryzen 5 Pro 2400 GE. Now the big difference between the GE and the regular 2400 is this one actually only runs at 35 watts for these smaller form factor units. So therefore, you know, we can't push a lot of power in this mini PC, but uh, yeah, for what it is, it does work really well. And Batocera overall, really easy to install. Like I mentioned, you can run it from an external drive. You can run it from a USB drive if you want to, or internal. There's a built-in scraper so we can get our metadata and artwork for each of our games. And we've got built-in bezels, or you can go with the bezel project from the download section. I mean, there's just a lot that's gone into Batocera. And in the past year, I mean, it has come a very, very long way. But what really matters here is how this little mini PC performs, so let's go ahead and jump right into some emulation. Come on. So starting out here really simple with some Dreamcast emulation. 
This is using the Flycast Core and Retro Arch, and it's running great. I didn't have a doubt that it wouldn't run fine on this machine. And if you wanted to do some Naomi and a Thomas Wave, it's going to run just as well, along with the lower end stuff. SNES, NES, PC Engine, Neo Geo, you want to do some MAME and N64, this little machine has more than enough power. Moving over to PSP emulation, and Batocera does utilize the standalone version of PPSSPP. I just went into this at 3x, I didn't even change the back end. We're using OpenGL here, and even on this APU and Linux, we're getting full speed with everything that I tested, even the harder to emulate games like God of War Chains of Olympus. And you know, I had a good feeling we were going to get great performance with PSP, and there's no doubt that, yeah, this is going to run basically any PSP game as long as it's compatible with the PPSSPP emulator. Moving over to some GameCube with the Dolphin emulator, we've got Automotolista, one of my go-to tests, also one of my favorite games. Games. This is a harder one to emulate, especially on lower end systems, and we're getting great performance. We're right there at 60. I didn't upscale these games at all, but I'm sure with some of the easier to emulate stuff, we could go up to 720p and maybe even 1080 on some of them. But right now we're at the native res, and this little system even handles F0GX on the Firefield track, which is notoriously hard to emulate. And if you take a look at our performance overlay, you see we're still using that OpenGL back end. With these newer drivers, even for Windows, we got a big boost in performance when it comes to these APUs. Another one I was really surprised about was uh, 3DS. So yeah, if you've ever tried to run this on an APU like this, especially 2000 series, you know how hard it can be to run. But with these newer updated drivers and better OpenGL support, we're actually getting great performance here at the native resolution. I also tested a few more games like Mario Kart 7 and Yoshi's Island. Same kind of performance here, but I'm sure there are some harder to emulate 3DS games that might struggle on this system even at the native resolution. But we're getting way better performance with 3DS than we did even three months ago. So with all of the emulation we've seen so far, I had a good feeling it was going to handle those. But you know, getting up there to PS2 and even Wii U, I thought we'd start to struggle with this little APU. But as you can see here, it even handles PS2 games. This is Gran Turismo 4, again, OpenGL back in, we do have the option to go to Vulcan, and even God of War 2 runs at full speed here. And this was really impressive, because in the past, we had a hard time running these PS2 games on these 2400 GEs. It's not a super powerful chip, and a lot of this performance really does come down to the development of the emulator itself, paired up with those newer drivers. But I gotta say, the most impressive thing I saw so far was a Wii U emulation using SimU. Vulcan back in, we've got Bayonetta 2, running at 60. Now I do get a few dips into the upper 50s. It's not something that really affects gameplay, and I'm not sure if I captured any of that. But up in the top left hand corner, we do have the FPS counter for the SimU emulator running right now. And this game runs great, I mean, it is fully playable. And I also went through and I tested Mario Kart 8. Another one that works really well on the 2400 GE. So I'd say, I mean, this thing's got a lot of stuff covered when it comes to emulation. And right now, you can actually pick these up for pretty cheap, be it a HP or a Lenovo version. But unfortunately, at the time of making this video, it doesn't do great with PS3. I tried the RPCS3 emulator here in Linux, and I also went back over to Windows just to test it. And yeah, I mean, no matter what settings I use, I just can't get full speed. But in Linux, I've got a lot of glitching going on. I've tried OpenGL just to see if that would help. I know Vulkan is going to perform better. But as you can see, I mean, it's just not a great experience. And this is an easier one to emulate. So overall, I think this mini PC performs absolutely amazing as a small form factor emulation machine, especially given the price. Now, you can actually find these a bit cheaper. It really depends on who's got a lot of them set up on eBay right now. 150 is usually the going price, but I have seen these as low as 135. And again, if you didn't want to run Potocera, we have several different operating systems that can run on this. I mean, it's an x86 platform, so if you wanted to go with something like Manjaro Linux and install your own emulators, you could do that. Or even Windows 11. It's really up to you. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. I'm actually really impressed by what this thing can do. I mean, up to Wii U, it would be nice to get some PS3 emulation out of the way on this. But, you know, at $150, I kind of wasn't expecting it, at least at the time of making this video. 
If you're interested in picking one of these up and putting something like this together, I will leave some links in the description and definitely let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Of course, you could go with a much larger form factor unit and add your own discrete GPU if you wanted to, to get a little better performance, at least when upscaling these higher end emulators. But I wanted to keep it as small as possible and I think this gets the job done really well. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.